Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So uh, right now guys, I had some time to prepare and to share with you um, something that I had the, the joy and the, uh, the grace to participate once again this year. It's been a couple years since I've gone to this summer camp um, and I uh, had the ability to volunteer as a team leader, to serve with other volunteers coming from different countries, even from the US. Um, and uh, with one goal, you know, not only just to have a community and to serve, to pray for one another, but also to go there and to serve the community in Torre Palice, in this uh, city where we did the summer camp, and especially to serve the kids and their families, to be able to show them the love of God by having fun with them, by playing sports, uh, crafts, music, English, you know, dancing, and just uh, rejoicing and having fun together, but also having a time during the day in which we were able to share with them, sit down and share with them how much God loves them and how much God has a purpose for them, that they are precious for God, that their lives are valuable and that God wants them to listen to him, that God wants them to follow him because he has prepared something wonderful for them, for their lives. And you see these kids come from a lot of different families. Uh, this camp is very famous in this area. So families, even like atheists or non-Christian families, they know what we do at camp. But nonetheless, the kids enjoy it so much that they willingly come to the camp and they willingly uh, participate in this, uh, these activities that we do. And uh, now in this video, I just wanted to share with you uh, just a little bit of this camp, what we have done, and something that specifically have been very, uh, have touched you know, my life and has really uh, made me uh, grow deeper and greater in the knowledge of, of God. And now this is the material that we had. So this is not mine. Uh, this is something prepared by the Prayer Covenant. I think it's like a group, uh, prayercovenant.org. It's an organization. And this is an, in Italian. And the te theme of the camp was follow the footsteps. And we had one Bible verse that was the, the main uh, verse for the week that the kids had to memorize, had to uh, try to remember, both in Italian, but also in English. And that is, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So, uh, so you know, the idea is that even if you're young, so even if you're a kid, but you can still be an example for other people, for other believers, uh, in how you how you talk, in how you behave, in how you love, you no know, loving in truth, in how you believe in God, in the way in which you trust God, and then impurity. So how you set yourself apart from the world, and you don't let yourself be influenced by, or uh, be in a sense contaminated. Right? You set yourself apart from the things, from the worldly things that do not align with the Word of God. And uh, now I just wanted to share with you here, this, uh, this was something that we did, that we gave to the kids, that was just this pact of praying, um, because in each day the camp lasted five days, from Monday to Friday. So in each day, there was a footprint that we shared with them. You know, there was a little sketch, uh, and then during the team time, we had the ability to explore a more deeply about that. And so the first day we had grace as the first footstep. Then second day, we have love. Then third day, we have compassion. Then repentance. And then uh, adoration or worship. So those were the five steps. And, um, and there was a prayer that we did with the kids to whoever with the kids wanted to make the prayer. No, it wasn't like we didn't force the kids to do anything uh, other than just, you know, being quiet or like not... Um, making a mess or not disturbing others but it was mostly like if you want to do this prayer if you want to you know close your eyes whoever wants to pray whoever wants to they can join in so uh, it wasn't like forcing them to do something um and uh, yeah each day we had these different prayers and then they could continue uh in uh, with more um uh, words instead of more footsteps more footprints and then with a prayer associated with the different uh, footprint. And now today I wanted to share with you uh, one main, uh, the main story that we use, the main parable 
that we used, and then different verses that were really, really impactful and were really important for the kids to understand. So the first uh, word was grace. And, uh, and the grace is that God, we have a lot of value to God. So we're valuable. Our lives are uh, have are precious in the eyes of God. So the, the God has created the heavens and the earth cares about us and we're precious to him. We're so precious that when we are lost or we, when we get lost, because maybe we start following other footsteps, other footprints. Maybe there is a TikToker, maybe there is an influencer, maybe there is an athlete, or maybe there is a friend, maybe there is an actor, right? Or someone that we uh, admire, that we start following, and maybe this person has ideas, beliefs, or uh, things that just get at, get us, you know, or the kids, because it was mostly shared with them, get us out of the road in the sense, and get us further and further from God. But the fact is, we are valuable to God. And it doesn't matter if we are lost, if we have lost the way, or maybe we have, uh, we don't believe in God, maybe because we were raised in a family that doesn't believe in God. So we don't really believe that he exists. But despite that, God wants to share, to make, wants you to know that he loves you. That he exists, that he loves you, and that he has something prepared for you, has something wonderful for you in store. And uh, he wants you to be part of his family. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to believe in him because that is the way in which you're going to be safe. That is the only way in which you're going to be saved from the consequences of being separated from God. And there is a rich inheritance and there is uh, joy and peace and love and uh, uh, every good thing if you come to know God and if you come to believe in him. And so the parable was the parable of the lost sheep. You might know about it. And Jesus here is um, replying to the Pharisees who were kind of um, accusing him of eating, of being with sinners. And Jesus is saying, uh, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance." And uh, so again, the story is very, very easy, right, to see. So the analogy that we wanted to use with the kids is that uh, why, why is someone happy? Why is this person, when he, found, when he finds the sheep, why are they happy? Why are they rejoicing? Because the sheep were valuable, right? If this particular person has 100 sheep, but he doesn't value them, well, if he loses one, he doesn't care, right? But the fact that he cares for the sheep, they're precious to him. That's why he goes out and he seeks it, right? Until he finds it because they're precious, because they're, they have a lot of value for him. And, uh, and that's why he's very happy and invites people to rejoice with him because he has found something that was very precious to him. And so Jesus is saying in the same way, whenever there is a person that is lost, so in the sense, a sinner, right? Someone that has turn their back to God, someone that has just followed their own way, someone that has followed their desires, someone that has followed their thoughts, someone that has rebelled or disobeyed against God, right? We all are sinners in a sense because we all have turned our back on God, but God loves us so much, we are so precious to God that he goes after us and he wants to find us. He wants to find us and to make us come home once again and uh, to rejoice with him and to be able to once again be uh, with him because that's the true purpose that we have. This is the purpose that we have is to know God, is to be with him and to really have this relationship that really fulfills us. Nothing in this world, not power, not money, not uh, authority, not prestige, not whatever, no, nothing can truly satisfy us and fulfills us in the way that God can, the way that Jesus can. And so that's why 
uh, God comes after us. But the good thing is that he doesn't force us to accept him, right? He doesn't force us to believe in him. He doesn't force us to uh, receive him. But he gives us a choice. And this choice is to, once again, uh, believe in him. This choice is to trust in him and therefore to allow him to guide us. Or we can also reject him. We can keep walking into our path, separated from God, without having to do anything with God. We can reject his love. We can reject his gift of salvation. We can reject his grace. And we can just follow in our steps. And uh, God is uh, loving, so he's not going to force us to love him back. He's not going to force us to believe in him. He's not going to force us to be with him. But he's going to make us clear in the sense, or at least he's going to make us know that, well, you see, if you're not with me, then these, there are some consequences that will happen because you're separated from me. You have the, your sin, your rebellion, your disobedience against me has some consequences. So unless you come with me and unless you get, you receive the gift that I have prepared for you, right? Unless you're part of my team, then you're going to be separated from me for an eternity. And uh, separate, being separated from God for all eternity is something that the Bible describes as something horrible, something that is not even uh, imaginable how bad it is. Because like it's being separated from everything that is joy, that is peace, that is love, that is goodness. So it's the complete absence of anything that is good. And that's what the Bible says that it's like uh, there is like torment, there is like gnashing of teeth, there is like uh, weeping, there is like there are always very negative terms associated with being separated eternally from God. But remember, this is not God's will. God wants us to love him back. God wants us to respond in faith to accept his gift of salvation, to accept the fact that he has provided a way, he has provided a solution for our disobedience, for our sins, for our rebellion. And uh, But because he's loving, he's not going to force us to accept it. He's going to just give us a choice. You can accept it or you can reject it. But he's going to explain, well, there are consequences for both. So this is the idea. And uh, so this is the first day, grace. And so the praying was, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace that has made me one of your loved children. And this is exactly what the Bible says. Because if you go to John chapter 1, right, when he talks about the word, so the logos, the eternal word, uh, being God and creating everything and uh, um, being the light of man, being uh, the, the truth, but then rejecting, coming into the word, right? coming, the word becoming flesh, as he says in verse 14, uh, dwelling among us. But if you go a couple of verses earlier, he says here, uh, he, so the word, the logos, so Jesus, here he's talking about Jesus, Jesus came to his own, so to his own people, to the, to the Hebrews, to the Jews. But his own did not receive him. So they rejected Jesus. That's why they crucified him. But here verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And this is wonderful because you can see that the condition to the right to become children of God is to believe in the name of Jesus, is to receive him, right? So this is the condition. So in order to become a children of God, we have to accept God's grace. We have to believe in Jesus and what he has done. The fact that he has provided us with salvation, with a way out from our sins, from our disobedience. So this is the, uh, the idea. <clears throat> so... Um, the, the act of becoming a children of God. It's not like everyone is a children of God. We all are creatures. Yes, we all are created in the image of God. Yes, we all are loved by God. Yes, um, but not all are children. Remember, the children of God are only those who receive Jesus and believe in his name. So have faith in the one true God. Uh, so that's the only condition. So that's the only way in which we can become children of God. So remember, it's a choice because you can choose to receive him and to believe in his name or you can choose as the Jews 
the main uh, a lot of Jews did in when Jesus came, you can decide not to receive him. You can decide to reject him. So see here the two different options, the two different choices that you can have. Um, and uh, yeah, that's very simple, right? Now, uh, the second day, we had the footprint of love. And, uh, and it, it was very interesting because the, we were talking with the kids about not just saying that, you know, I love you, but proving it. So proving with your actions that you love. So if you truly love someone, then you're going to do things, you're going to behave in a way that is going to be loving, that is going to show that you love them, right? It's not just merely, I love you, but then like you ignore them or uh, you mock them or you insult them or you don't care about them. No, of course not, because that would contradict what you say. So in order to be coherent, if you say, I love you, then you prove or you show that you love that particular person by doing things. And that's exactly what Jesus uh, said as well. Jesus said here in John 14, 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So here is Jesus is, is saying something very simple. If you truly love me, there is another one here. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So if you truly love Jesus, if you truly have received him, and if you truly want to follow him as his, his footsteps, right, in a sense, then how can you show to God, to Jesus, that you love him? Very simply, by following his commandments and by keeping them. That's it. It's very simple, right? And that's exactly what we all do. When we have a friend that we love and he says to us something, he gives us advice, we're going to listen to him, right? We're going to uh, pay attention to what he says. We're going um, to give importance to what he says, right? Of course, human beings can fail. The good thing about Jesus is that he doesn't fail because he's God. So his commandments are perfect. He's He's always faithful. He's never going to betray us. Like even our closest friends could betray us, but Jesus will never betray us. He's faithful even when we are not faithful, but he stays faithful. That's what the Bible says. And that's the wonderful thing about Jesus, that we can completely 100% trust him and he will never betray us. Um, and Jesus is, is saying something simple. If you truly love me, then you're going to do what I say. There is another verse. I don't have it right here, but... There's another verse that says, if you truly love me, you're going to do my commandments. You're going to do what I, what I say you to do. Not because you're obligated to do them. Not because you're forced to do them. Not because you are afraid what's going to happen if you don't do them. But because you love me. Because you love me and you know me, then you will know that what I say to you is truth. That what I'm saying to you is the best for you. Even if you might not fully understand it, but it's the best for you. So that's why you're going to do what I command you. You're going to do what I say because you understand the goodness and the truth that there is in it. And uh, and this is very, very important. We try, we really emphasize with the kids a lot of this, uh, the importance, you know, of this. So not just saying, okay, I love Jesus or I love God, but then we do whatever we want, right? Or we go against what he commanded, what he said. If we truly love God, if we truly want to follow him, then uh, the... We want to obey what he said. We want to follow what he said. It's not easy. Many times we're going to fail. Many times it's going to be hard. Uh, and that's why the prayer was, um, help me. So, Heavenly Father, help me to love you and to obey you with all my heart. We need his help. With our own strength, we will not be able to do it. But with his strength, with his ability, with the Holy Spirit that comes and helps us and guides us and leads us, then we can do it. And when we fail, when we sin or when we do something wrong, we can always come to him. We can always ask for forgiveness. We can always confess our failures to him and he can make us stand again and we can keep walking uh, with the Spirit, keep walking and following him. Now, third day, just going a little bit faster now, third day was the word compassion. So exactly as we understand how much God and how much Jesus loves us, we also should love others. 
not only those who we like or those who are our friends, but also those who we don't like, those who maybe have mocked us or those who have treated us bad, especially for kids. You know, it's very um, easy to do the, oh, he's my friend, I'm, I'm with him, oh, I don't like him, so I ignore you know, that, per that person, that guy. So it's very common to see in, 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 uh, in kids, you know, the, the fact that they do little groups and sometimes they mock one another, they call each other names. So the idea was exactly as we should share and we should have compassion on others. So we should show them love. We should love them in the exact same way in which God, in which Jesus loves us. And so the praying was, give me the strength to love others in the same way that you love me. And the, the Bible verse was uh, uh, John 15, 12. It was, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. But not only this one, because this, of course, is Jesus talking to the disciples. So this is something easy. But then look here what Jesus says in Matthew 5. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. And here, look at what Jesus says. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So in the sense, Jesus is saying, see, exactly as God blesses with the sun, with each day, with the rain, everyone both those who believe in him and those who oppose him, both evil people and both good people, both just and the unjust. So everyone, every human being, whether they believe in God or not, whether they have a, received Jesus and they follow Jesus or not, they all are benefactors of God's grace and God's blessings on the world. And, and look here what just adds. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you have more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So like Jesus is saying, if you only love those who love you, or if you only are together with those who you are comfortable with, then what's the... What's the hard thing that you're doing, right? Aren't all people doing the same, even like sinners, even people that you know, are, uh, do, are not in the sense like following God's commandments, are not even pagans doing the same? Yeah, they do. So if you do the same as them, what is the difference? But if instead you love your enemies, you bless those who curse you, you do good to those who hate you, you pray for those who uh, use you and persecute you, right? You do something that generally, People don't do because people don't love those who are mocking them, those who are oppressing them, those who are using them or persecuting them or hating them or cursing them. You know, it's very hard to do this. But look, this is something Jesus is commanding to do. So it's easy to love your friends, but you should also love your enemies. And this is how you show that you're different. This is how you show... And in a sense, you are sons of your Father in heaven because exactly as he loves everyone and he shares his grace and his blessings on everyone, both on the evil and on the good, on the just and on the unjust, exactly you should also do the same. You should love not only, and you should show your grace and your compassion, not only to your friends or to your loved ones or to the people that you like, but also to those who you do not like, those who maybe are hating you or those who are not treating you good. And, uh, and that's when you are perfect. Because when you do this, you are doing exactly what God is doing. That the God is sharing his blessings and his grace to everyone, even to those who might not deserve it, right? But God is doing it the same because he loves everyone. And, he, and the Bible says that God desires that all would come to salvation, that all would repent and, uh, and be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. That is God, what God desires. And so this is one of the teachings that is very, very um, unique in Christianity. You don't really find this concept very, very uh, common in, uh, uh, in any philosophy, in any world religion. Sometimes you have just indifference, right? Okay, 
if someone is hitting you, someone is confronting you, uh, don't act with violence. So many times it's that is the message, you know, you don't love them. You just act, don't react, act as they are doing. But the, the, the word love of your enemies is something that is uniquely Christian. Uh, so it's because it's not easy. It's actually counter, uh, counter normal because it's not something that you do generally speaking. So that's the teaching of Jesus. Uh, then the fourth day was repentance. Uh, and again, it means changing mind. So you understand that uh, your desires, your thoughts, or something that you might want to do, or something that the world maybe tells you to do. Yeah, this is good. Come on, do it. Everyone is doing it, right? Why not? Um, but if it doesn't align with God's truth, and it doesn't align with Jesus' commandments, then that means that it's not good, right? And so repentance means changing mind you understand you realize oh this is something that is not good even if everyone else is doing it but this is not good this is not making me any good it's not making my loved ones any good and this is something that goes against what god has commanded what god truly wants and so i leave that aside so repentance means i understand this is bad i leave that aside and i change direction i turn i change my mind about it uh, and again, it's a repentance of heart. So we understand that uh, what we want to do, our desires, our thoughts might not be the in aligned with the word of God. So we repent and we change ways and we follow him uh, and uh, we adapt our mind to his truth. We don't adapt the word of God to what we believe or to what we would like to do but we modify, we, re, we renovate our mind according to God's truth. And uh, yeah, I don't have any verse here, but actually it's Romans 12 too. And it says here, uh, but be regenerated by the renewal of your mind so that you might know uh, what is the will of God, the perfect, the good, perfect, and um, pleasing, the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. I think I have it right here, right? Yeah. So do not conform to this word, but be renewed, uh, be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you might know by experience, which is the good, uh, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So again, re renewing our mind, not conforming us to this word, so to the desires of this word, or to the standards of this word, or to what is normal you know, in this word, but by the truth of God and what God truly says. Because remember, his commandments are true. His commandments are for our good is not to uh, make us you know, not uh, have pleasure or not have uh, not experience good things. No, it's not for that. Those the commandments God has for us is because they're good for us, because they're truly good, because they're gonna save us from bad consequences, from having heart pains, from having uh, um, relational issues. So we should always uh, renew our mind reject all those things that maybe we did in the past, but that do not align really with what God says, and instead turn and follow God's truth. So that's what we should do. And that is a genuine repentance. Uh, and again, last one is adoration or worship, which is again, uh, realizing all this brings us gratitude. So we should be thankful. Thankfulness is something very, very powerful because it makes you, first of all, realize how much God has done for you already, uh, how much God has given you, how much uh, he has loved you, how much he has, what, what he has done to save you from the consequences of your sins, that is eternal separation from him. And so this gratitude, this thankfulness brings us to praise God, brings us to adore him. So brings us to really say, oh, thank you, Lord. I want to praise you. You are really, you are God. I'm so thankful. You are good. You have done such a wonderful things. And if you read the Psalms, the Psalms are full of these acts of praising God for who he is, for who he has accomplished, for what he has done, for his promises, for his good, for he will, for he has saved us and for his love, for his faithfulness, for his mercy, for his forgiveness, for his compassion, for his grace, uh, for his love and so forth. You know, that there are like infinite reasons why we should be thankful to God. And when we just stop for a moment and we realize how much we have and how much God has blessed us with, 
uh, despite you know, the hardships, despite the bad things that may happen into our lives, uh, because these lives are not perfect, our eternal lives will be, um, but the fact that God has in store something from us that is eternal. And this eternal inheritance is what we should be really focusing at. And this, again, brings us gratitude, praise, thanksgiving. Uh, and this is something that, again, allows us to be grateful and to be content about what we have. Uh, despite you know, the fact that Jesus himself said, you know, in this war, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have difficulties. Uh, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So in Jesus, we have victory. Uh, because we have eternal assurance of this eternal life we're going to spend with him for eternity when there will be no suffering, no pain, no uh, sin, and that we're going to have that uh, full life that God always wanted us to have, united with him in experiencing true love and joy and peace and fullness. Uh, and, and that is what we should be you know, focusing on. And that's it. So that was the, just a very brief um, summary of this camp with some Bible verses. Uh, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. God bless you. See you. Bye-bye.